Boy, that ticked everybody off. I mean, it's just I, the nature of our world. It, Actually, the more the better, so I can help educate. You want to walk into any room and just be like, so I'm here to teach you. And you're like, I'm not a student, so that's not going to go over well. But it's funny. Quote, unquote, it's a cool situation. We got three guys who can play, and there's only one spot. I see it as a cool situation. Normally in the NFL, that's called an absolute, unequivocal disaster if you don't know who your quarterback is. But that's not what he's saying there. Correct. Yeah. Correct. What Actually, he's saying is we have three guys who can play the position, which is pretty cool. And what he's not saying that I believe he's thinking is because Lord knows I'm going to need three guys because my QBs always get hurt. See, I don't think he's thinking that. I think he's thinking that six of my seven years here, I've had to go to more than one QB. Right. So the fact that I probably... History will tell me that I need to have more than one QB, and so it's pretty cool that I have three that I believe that I can go to. Okay. Do you believe him, by the way? Do you think he, he thinks that he has three guys who can play? Absolutely. You do? Yes, without a doubt. I'm not convinced of that at all. In fact, I think that's exactly opposite of something you told me two days ago that you think. You think that Kyle Shanahan privately does not think that Trey Lance can be his starter. I didn't say that Trey Lance you was didn't? one of the three. Oh, <laughs> I mean, are you are you going to just sit? That's funny. Do you want to put on your track shoes before you jump to conclusions over there, Bob I don't, Beeman? I don't need them. You know what shoes I'm wearing. You're with the same yeah. shoes I'm wearing. Damn right. Team shoes. You know exactly. That's right. These are Willard and Dibbs standbys. I do believe that Kyle thinks that he has three quarterbacks that he, he can play. Who are you? Exactly. You're <laughs> Brock Purdy, Sam Darnold, Who are you? and Brandon Allen. Yeah, that's not what he's saying. Come on, it's that's not, not what, what he's, he's not saying. Don't be disrespectful. And you, you know what, Mark? We're going to find out because actions speak louder than words. And when the official depth chart is released before the first game, we're going to know how he feels about his three quarterbacks and who they are. Because if Brandon Allen is not one of them and he gets released, he's not going to make it all the way through waivers, I don't think, and be on the practice squad. Probably not. So if you do think that you have three quarterbacks that you – think it's pretty cool that you have, and Trey Lance is one of them, then we know that he's got more faith in Trey Lance than other people think that he does. Maybe, but then again, uh, you're keeping options open. So what does that mean? That can mean trade. Like, they're not releasing the guy. Trey Lance is not not making the team. Correct. He's going to make the team, uh, or a trade is possible, I guess. Um, that's, the, that, that's what's on the table with regard to, to Trey Lance. My question would be, is, is, is I guess twofold. One, does he actually believe what he's saying? But secondarily, and maybe more importantly, do, do, do people believe that he believes what he's saying? Because Kyle Shanahan could just as easily be saying, I've got three guys who can play because that's what he wants everybody to think that's what he thinks. Right. But, but it is. Right. No, of course it, it is. Why, they, it's they, July. The, the 49ers need, I don't know if it's now, I don't know if it's next year, they need the league to think that Trey Lance can play. They need that. It either needs to be, A, true. <laughs> Which would be the best way. And he's the quarterback of the 49ers someday. Or... They need to get on the phone and have some interest. One of those two things is true, and both of them require the league to think Trey Lance is good, and I personally believe right now the league does not think that. Well, I think that his actions will tell the league exactly what he thinks, and if he is as revered around the league as an offensive guru and a quarterback whisperer and all the rest of it, what his actions dictate will tell the league exactly what he thinks about Trey Lance. And Maybe. This is, but you this get, is where I'm, I'm talking about the depth chart and like preseason. But you I can would, mess with that, can't you? You, you know how can, sometimes but, it's like QB1 is Brock Purdy and QB2 is is Darnold or Lance. Well, let's, get to, do the, that. let's get to the opener in Pittsburgh. Okay. And you're going to have two quarterbacks in uniform unless he decides, boy, I so badly want to dupe the league that I'm going to have three quarterbacks active. I'm not going to use my third quarterback as the emergency, you don't count as a rostered player quarterback. I'm just going to activate three anyway. 
That way I can use subterfuge and say, well, I don't know who QB2 would be. Mm. Brock's my starter, and I've got two backups, and I'm not going to tell either of you or any of you who the real backup is because I want to protect their value. I tell you what's a cool situation for Kyle Shanahan. Having three quarterbacks. No, is that in the month of August, he's never going to have to answer what we want him to answer. And that's, I think, what he means by I need to survive the press conference because he knows that the questions every day are going to be all about the quarterback position. And so the danger would be, for example, let's say Brock Purdy had had the surgery a month earlier than he had it. And Brock Purdy was ready, you know, like right about now. Okay? Well, now, now you got to go actually practice. And then we're going to do the annoy. Oh, Brock Purdy went six of nine <laughs> Tony, with uh, an Tony interception yesterday. against people wearing green. And he had a yellow shirt on. All of that stuff's going to be going on. And, and therefore, people, as you know, will overreact to it. They'll overreact to what's going on based on practice reports. Well, we're not going to have any of those for Brock. So one of the reasons I think that fans are always so enamored with the Wiseman's, Kamingas, and Lances of the world is because we fall in love with the unknown. We love it. You go buy your Powerball ticket, and you get, to, check that. get to spend a couple hours going, maybe, maybe tonight is the night that my life changes. And in a smaller version, we do that with the athletes who get drafted. Maybe this is Mahomes. Like, maybe this is him. Well, we get to play maybe with Brock Purdy all month. All month. And just assume if he's healthy, he's starting week one, but you don't have to deal with, but he performed poorly in practice on Tuesday. Right. And now we got to answer questions about it. He can remain the unknown. All month long. Well, the unknown, but also the incumbent and yeah. the starter. It's not really unknown to the extent of will he or won't he. It's is he or isn't he healthy. Because if Brock Purdy's healthy, Brock Purdy's going to start. There, there's been no indication. Kyle Shanahan can say how cool it is to have three quarterbacks that he feels good about playing. That's all fine and good. But we know that if all three quarterbacks, whoever those three are, if they're all healthy... And Brock Purdy's one of them. Brock Purdy's going to be the starter in week one. So that, I think, is not so much of an unknown. But your point is a good one in that he doesn't have to go through August and answer questions about, well, Brock was 7 of 11 and Trey was 8 of 9. Has the competition gotten closer? Is Trey maybe going to supplant Brock? The 49ers have a unique quarterback controversy. Normally, that phrase is reserved for, you know, Doug Flutie, Rob Johnson. We don't, we don't know who our quarterback is. The 49ers have a quarterback controversy right now for their backup job. For their backup job. I don't know how often that has ever been the case before. Sure, people are competing. In theory, Purdy and Sudfeld were competing for... Actually, QB3 Yeah, exactly. last year, sort of. But we didn't even know that that was a thing until they cut Sudfeld. Because we all right. thought Sudfeld's got guaranteed money. Sudfeld's your three. When we found out that Jimmy G was signed, okay, Jimmy, insurance policy for Trey, just in case the kid's not ready or whatever. Sudsy's the three. And, you know, this, this Brock guy, maybe they'll just, maybe they'll put him on the practice squad and see what they have down the road. They'll kick that can down the road. And I think, Mark, the other interesting thing about this Niner camp is the backup quarterback controversy, the BQBC, <laughs> is maybe the most compelling thing in camp. Well, it, it in is. In terms of, like, job job con- well, uh, controversy or and, compa- competition. And like I'm saying, uh, there have been battles for the backup job before in the NFL, but nobody cares. Exactly. Nobody cares in camp. This is the most cared about backup quarterback controversy in the history of the league. And in fact, the previous ones, you can't even use the word controversy because controversy presupposes that people care. When Sudfeld was battling Purdy, if your name wasn't Larry Kruger, you didn't care. <laughs> you didn't care. I didn't care. Sudsy. Purdy. Who? Wh- whatever. Like, all year long, hopefully, 
We don't get to that guy. Who knew one of them was going to become a sensation, a star, a big name, a big thing? That's not something anybody would have predicted. But uh, this is absolutely the most cared about backup quarterback battle in the history of the league. So much so that I do think some people don't realize that that's what it is. Well, when that's Kyle, what it is. And Kyle not, makes these comments. Right. It's not three headed monster, and then we'll see where the chips fall. Right. It's a battle for the backup, and they might need the backup week one. Right, which makes the battle for the backup even more interesting because the battle for the backup might be the battle for the week one starter if Brock Purdy's not ready. And also, the battle for the backup might mean if Trey Lance loses the battle for the backup, it might mean that he gets shown the door sooner rather than later because... You're not going to have Trey Lance be QB3, I don't think. If if it's clear that Sam Darnold is going to beat Trey Lance out, you've got to Trey Lance before you got to trade Trey Lance before that reality becomes something that all teams can see in week 1. What if there's no market? I have an idea by the way. But what how what would you say? What if nobody wants Trey Lance? Then you just got to keep him. You got to keep him and you got to find a way to play him at some point and show him, show the league that he's actually better than they think. You fake an injury. For Trey Lance? Mm-hmm. Well. If Sam's going to be the backup quarterback and Brock's healthy for week one, I'm going to tell everybody that Trey broke a finger or something. I, if I'm Trey Lance, no way. Because already the knock on Trey Lance is that. Choice. Oh, yeah, he does. You think he's going to go public against the 49ers to the media? And say, my, look at my fingers. I'll do jazz hands oh on gosh, camera. Career suicide. Well, career suicide is them having him have an injury when he's not hurt because he's already been hurt twice. Yeah, but it doesn't have to be one of those injuries. I, yeah. It's not a broken ankle. Like, we're not going to see. It's something that, that you yeah. wouldn't be able to see. I don't think that. Him, he's got that's not happening to a young player. Tightness. He had hamstring tightness. It's just, I mean, there's no way. Don't you, Trey. If, you <laughs> if do. I'm Trey Lance, no way I play along Look with that. Look at me, Trey. Yes, you do. Your hamstring is tight. It's tight. That's something that veterans on guaranteed contracts do, not rookies who are looking to find a home somewhere else. Wow. Well, if that's I, the way this goes. Again, in in this scenario that we're we're painting, um Trey would absolutely be incentivized to do that. Trey doesn't want the league knowing that he couldn't even win the backup gig. That's not good for him. That's not good for him. Well, it's also not good for him to be injured yet again. And then who would be your emergency QB3? Brandon Allen? Sure. So Trey Lance is just going to sit on IR with a broken finger for as long well, as you want? No, you're not putting him on IR. I just, look, I, this is real touchy. Kyle can say it's a cool situation and stuff. Sure, <laughs> it is today. Is not going to be cool if this is where it sits on September 3rd. It's not cool. It is not cool in the NFL to be like, yeah, got a got a great deep quarterback room, and I don't know what we're gonna do. That's not cool. Cool in the NFL is having Patrick Mahomes on your team. That's cool. But they don't. They don't. And they most don't. teams don't. No, but most teams do know who their guy is already. Like, it doesn't even have to be Patrick. It's cool to have Joe Burrow as your QB. Right. It's cool to have Lamar Jackson or Jalen Hurts or Josh Allen or even Tua. I mean, hell, even the Denver Broncos know who their guy is. He may have been awful last year, but it's way cooler to be like, we got a dude, and that's our quarterback. And the Niners have that. You think that the Niners don't know exactly what their no, I know the they depth do. chart is? I know they do. So then when Kyle says how cool it is to have three quarterbacks, basically what he's saying that I hear him say is, we've got three quarterbacks, including a guy, Trey Lance, who we probably aren't going to use and don't really want, but I'm going to love on him. And I said this a month ago, what we're going to hear from Niners camp is un requited, unmitigated Trey Lance love. Of course. Because it's either we love Trey, actually we really love Trey, and he's QB2 and you know Sam Donald's the emergency, or it's we love Trey, P.S. we don't really love Trey, 
but we want to trade Trey, so we're going to love on him. Yeah. That's all this is. Of course, they're keeping every option, every door open all the time, and that's certainly for now what they're going to do. Yeah. We'll go to the phones in a second. But the phones. A, a reminder here, with training camp coming up, it does. It opens Wednesday, okay? Uh, next Wednesday, and we will be live from the Hilton Santa Clara on Wednesday and Thursday. When I say we, I don't mean you and me. I mean mm-hmm. all the other shows here at the station because everything's going to kind of be closed down by the afternoon. We're going. We'll be there. Yeah. And then we're going to come here. But Steiny and Goo and the Morning Roast, make sure if you're planning to be at camp next Wednesday, come stop by and see the guys. And also a reminder to join us at the Hilton Santa Clara ahead of every home game this season for their public tailgate. Why sit in traffic when you can enjoy refreshing beverages, delicious food from their very own food truck? It's open three hours pregame and an hour postgame for every game, and admission is always free. Plus, you can follow them on Instagram and get a sneak peek of upcoming events and fan-inspired menu items. That all happens during the year. And again, the roast and Steiny and Goo will be out there at the Hilton Next Wednesday, broadcasting live. I may actually be live at the Hilton. I may just bum rush the set and join the morning there. roast or the Steiny and Guru oh, show. Oh, you're going to join that? Not during 2 to 6. No, 2 to 6, I'm going to be You'll back be here. Because okay. you and I were talking about going down and oh, taking in the camp. And I thought that would be awesome to go see actual live practice again and see as many as we can. But while we're down there, I might just jump in at the Hilton and do, it. do a little 10-minute spot with the boys. I'm going to be over there charting absolutely (laughs) every throw that's made by every quarterback. I will be testing launch angle for each throw. I will have spreadsheets, graphs. I've hired Gabe Kapler to stand next to me for the whole thing. And at 2 o'clock, I will bring you the analytics on who can actually play quarterback, even though the 49er quarterback won't be there. I'm still waiting for your Gabe Kapler tribute video when you eat a burger and you describe it, and I saw you shared some something else from I, his IG today. I had a burger for breakfast this morning. For breakfast? Yeah, put a little uh, burger what? patty with a fried egg over the top. Oh my gosh, there's nothing more delicious than that. You go bun or no bun? No bun. No bun. No bun. Come no on. bun. I'll eat a bun like when I if I go, if I order a burger, not in the morning with an egg on it. Just no, a little, just patty and egg. Yeah, some blueberries, maybe a vegetable of some sort. My God, it's the best. I haven't made an IG story out of it. Yeah, Gabe was at some coffee house in okay. Cincinnati. I saw you shared the link, but I didn't get a chance to open it. Elite vibes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can play it later. Okay. He's, he's, it's the best. Uh, Jerry in Walnut Creek. <laughs> hey, Jerry, what are you doing? How's it going, guys? Um, What's up? What I'm doing, um, I'm listening to all of this, and, I, and I'm thinking, with, I didn't hear what Kyle said today but, uh, directly. I, didn't, I came on after you. Um, well, Jerry, Jerry, do you want it? Do you want to hear it? Pardon? Do you want to hear it? Sure. All right, Jer- <laughs> Jerry, stand by. This is going to be musty training camp because it seems like every day you got three guys with something to prove behind center. I mean, we got we got three guys who can play, and there's only one spot, and we have a good team. Um, so I see it as a cool situation. And as there's all, last year, we had some unknown. We believed in Trey, but he hadn't gone out and done it yet. So, right. but we believed in him. We, we got to see him for a year and a half and what he could do. And he lost that opportunity, which happens in football. And we had another guy come in, very similar to Trey, but less reps and stuff. And Brock got that opportunity. So now we're in this situation, and it's just, I get how everyone wants something set in stone, but. It's not set in stone, and but I love the options, and I love the experience that Brock got. I love that Trey has gotten some, too, and I love the ability that we have in the room. And besides those three, I love our team around them. So let's let it play out, and all I got to do is survive the press conference. Okay, Jerry, <laughs> there it is. What do you think? So what I think is I think Kyle's best strategy would be to present Brock as – been on the mend, making sure that we're not working too hard. Just going to let him uh, he needs to focus all his attention on the other three. So as good as he can, maybe in practice, work Brock really hard. But as far as the, the uh, preseason games and whatnot, you play Lance, you play Darnold, you let them either shine or screw up, and then 
you, you know, toward the end of things, now you bring Brock into the picture. And if Lance is doing fabulously, maybe he starts the first game. Mm. Um, I, I, you know, I, I yeah. Here, here's what I think, Jerry. Your phone's a little wonky there, so uh, but but I think we we we, we get your idea, and and, and yeah, Kyle's not going to close the door on anything now. Why would he do that? Why would he do that to the players? Why would he do that to himself? Why would he do that to the 49er fan base? Why would he do that? He's not going to do that. Um, but here, here's here's my belief in in one sentence. If Brock Purdy were fully healthy, this would sound different. So Kyle Shanahan does not know, or at least cannot, I know the lovely Christy is, is listening, and her favorite phrase, under promise, over deliver. And that's what the 49ers are doing with Brock Purdy. They, they think he's going to be ready week one. They're not going to promise it. They're not going to say it. If they do that, that puts Brock in a really crappy spot. And they don't even know if we're going to make it 51 days from now. Well, who knows who's going to be alive by that? Exactly. He's made that point before. But um, that's the only reason he's doing that. He's doing that because right now Brock continues to work his way back from a major injury. I think all things and all signs are good. But until they get a full green light on him, they are going to act like they have no idea what's going on. And I think that there's no harm and there's only benefit in saying what he said about having three quarterbacks because you probably will need at least two quarterbacks. You might need all three. You're fresh off a year where you needed four quarterbacks and you probably needed a fifth and you didn't have a fifth and you ran out of quarterbacks. So there's no harm in talking about the fact that you've got three quarterbacks that you believe in because you're probably going to need him knowing that the starter right now is hurt and the guys you have behind him maybe aren't good enough to hold the job down if the starter, who is currently hurt, is unable to give it a go. 